Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I think I have my AN225 woes sorted out. I've put the FAR aerodynamic module on all of the wing surfaces. Of course I'm still using B9 procedural control surfaces. Uh, so basically I added them to the left wing, right wing, left horizontal stabilizer, right horizontal stabilizer, and the two vertical stabilizers. And those are all separate pieces, those aren't in symmetry. Uh, so yeah, I think I've got right. The key here is that basically you have to flip around the right side everything. And uh, so if we pull out, and this is how it has to be oriented in uh, Unity. And that's the big problem with a lot of mods like the Shuttle or the Baran. The reason why they don't work well with FAR is because basically FAR doesn't read anything on the right side. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's an interesting choice, but you can see if I pull out, this is the copy of the right wing. The right wing is oriented like the left wing, it's just upside down. And so when you pull it out from the inventory, you actually have to flip it over in order to use it. And so that's what we've done uh, with that and the right horizontal stabilizer. Otherwise, if we don't do that with FAR, for the parts that are meant for FAR, uh, the right wing and right horizontal stabilizer wouldn't be red at all, and so we would immediately on takeoff roll to one side. Uh, we'll roll to the right because we'll only get lift from the left side, and it will crash. So, yeah, it has to be oriented li like that in Unity. That's not something that the stock game actually requires, because the stock game, it doesn't do any calculations, it just reads... Uh, what you tell it for how much lifting surface there is. It just takes that number. But FAR is trying to calculate stuff. So you basically have to input... It, it doesn't calculate things perfectly. It has a trapezoidal approximation. So I, I looked at the wiki and tried to figure things out. So uh, basically, uh, the wing is approximated as a trapezoid and you tell it uh, how long the average cord is, so about here-ish, uh, that, that length, how big the wingspan is, what the relationship is between the cord at the root and the cord at the tip, and more or less, and also you have to tell it the sweep angle, and that'll give it the information it needs to create the trapezoid that approximates the wing. And so that's what I've done for the surfaces. Though with the vertical stabilizer, that's obviously not easy because this is not a trapezoid. Uh, so what I did was I pre pretended that there was a trapezoid uh, with that length at the bottom and that length at the top but the full height. So it's more like uh, as far as far goes it's actually a shape like this which is close enough. So we are testing it with our payload. So this is a tank I mean, not the real payload, not what we really want on there. This is a 272.8 ton tank. It's supposed to be two. Well, let's bump it up. It's supposed to be 275 tons, the max plus its tank. So about there. And you can see the center mass is pulled up quite a lot by the existence of that tank. And you can see the center of lift as it is right now. And let's take it outside and see what happens. It still flops on its tail initially uh, because we're very close to the rotation point. You know what? I'm going to move the landing gear back a little bit so it doesn't do that. Okay, that should be better, right? Please. Okay, ignition. Throttle up. Uh oh, we're going off to the right here. <laughs> it's just gonna be like this, huh? Oh, there we go, we can plant it now. We've got enough authority with the horizontal stabilizer. As we get lift, there's some risk of sort of squirreling about on the runway because we're light on the landing gear, so we have to avoid that. I think I can rotate off now. Uh, well, we've got some gain in altitude. 
this is our maximum payload basically. Uh, it could probably carry a little bit more but basically in the form of more fuel in the wings and we don't really need that. Eek. It doesn't seem to have as much lift as it ought to but as long as we can do what we need to do we'll be fine. And we are off the ground just in time. A heroic effort. <laughs> we could also underfuel it a little bit more, I think. I don't know what kind of duration it gives us. It says 56 minutes. I don't think we're going to need all that time. i got to accelerate a little bit before retracting the landing gear. There, uh, we're starting to accelerate, retract landing gear. So there we go, basically at 600 tons. And we will test whether we can land. Just in case we have to abort with the max spacecraft after all. That might be a thing that has to happen, right? Actually, we should test whether we can go fast at high altitude first and then come back down. We should make sure that we have enough fuel for the full deal. So we get to altitude. Turns out we can't go, and we need to come back with the max on top of us. And the amount of kerosene that we pack has to be enough for all of that. Also, I think the AN-225 would have to have had some propellant in order to top off the hydrogen and oxygen, which would boil off during the flight. To make sure that the max had all of its fuel, so it would carry some hydrogen and oxygen inside of it. To be honest, it'd be a lot easier if the MAX was just an SSTO. <laughs> but it would probably have no payload to negative payload if it was like that. Any way you look at it, it's a nice look though. Okay, we're looking good. We're at 6,800 meters. Um, we should get above 10 kilometers at least and be much closer to Mach 0.8 something uh, but once we stop climbing we can accelerate I actually want to see what we can accelerate to so I'm gonna level out here we're getting pretty far away from the Cape normally I think they would probably circle around uh, and stay closer to the airfield just in case there needs to be an abort so I don't think they would go out this far we have to maintain quite an angle of attack right now. We're not not—we're clearly not getting as much lift as we ought to even though I sized the wings appropriately. And that's one problem with the trapezoid uh, approximation. It doesn't take into account, you know, the thickness of the airfoil, the type of airfoil, or um, just a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, if there's any body lift, we're not getting that right now. So... We could probably, like, pretend that the wings are bigger than they are or something to compensate for that. I don't know. We haven't used much fuel. Uh, we've used about 10,000, well, uh, let's say 12,000 liters so far, or one-fifth to get to this height and speed. So I don't think the fuel is going to be a problem. We're carrying basically what I would expect to be the right amount. Okay, we are above Mach 0.8 and above 9 kilometers. I think we're doing pretty well. I don't think there's any problem here. So I'm going to turn around and see if we can land. After all, turning around early and seeing if we can land is harder because we'll be heavier marginally than trying to continue like this for a little while longer. Overall, Max itself should be less of an aerodynamic hindrance than this blunt object that we're carrying on top of us, so that is going to be an improvement as well. Okay, hopefully we're pointing relatively at the cape. A little bit hard to tell, we can't see land anymore. I want to go down slowly. 
And we can probably throw it back a bit since we are descending. We're very, very stable right now at 9 kilometers in Mach 0.84. We're descending only a little bit. I think we should ascend a little bit faster. Maybe try and nudge it without having physical time warp issues. I think we can slow down now. Land is in sight. The cape is actually to our right there. We'll deal with that once we get closer. We can see the runway, but we gotta come in from the opposite direction. I can't really make out the runway right now. Once again, I don't have air brakes. But there's flaps. It is wonderful how much drag those flaps create. We're only on flap setting one. Okay, we're in locked view, turning towards the runway. And I'll put gear down now. I'm expecting to land faster than it normally would because we clearly don't have the lift that it ought to have. I'm trying to keep it above 120 meters per second. Bar is very good with the transonic and supersonic stuff, much better than stock, but because of its approximation of wing shape, it's not that great with slower stuff, especially takeoff and landing. Okay, more flaps. The rudders just don't work the way they ought to. Oh yeah, it has trouble pulling up. I forgot about this. Uh... Uh, well, ow, uh, it's a skew again. I keep doing this. I'm gonna have to avoid this on like official attempts. Uh, power brake. I mean, a handbrake turn. Handbrake turn is what I meant. Okay, yeah, no, I gotta work on that. Um, so yeah, right at the end, it likes to not pull up. It, it does not want to flare. And. Maybe having the flaps down is just a bad idea in general. They might uh, cause a certain... They might, they might be a problem. Yeah, I'll think about that. But anyway, uh, we can land safely, I guess you could say. Uh, actually, I wouldn't call that safe. But anyway, it works better and I'll work on the max tank and maybe we'll... We still need to think about the decoupler system and how it's going to separate off the max space plane. And that's the toughest part, but at least uh, this seems to be ready to go. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.